On today's show, we're going to be looking at the brand new October 2018 Lightroom CC update. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, at least that's the general idea, talking about all sorts of things, photography, video, live streaming, related, could be hardware, could be software, could be gear, could be technique, could be any number of things, and today we're talking about the new Lightroom CC 2018, October 2018 update. There's just been an update and it's kind of a cool one. There's there's some really kind of big level features in here that are um, that are happening. So here's where we're starting off with number one thing that has got me excited, and this is why I decided I wanted to do the show today, is Apple Photos migration. Now look, you guys who've known me for a while, you know I came from a back a, 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 a background a background of Aperture. It's, it was like a backature, a background of Aperture. I worked at Apple. I worked with Aperture for a very, very long time. In fact, I worked with it since before it was born. It was one of those things. I'm like, it's, you know, third uncle twice removed. Anyway, whatever. So um, Aperture has been a part of my DNA from the beginning. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Made a website, ApertureExpert.com. Loved that. That was really great. It was a good business model until <laughs> Apple killed Aperture. And then they said, hey, we're doing photos. And you know what? I got on board. I drank the Kool-Aid. I said, photos is going to be the future. It is going to eventually replace Aperture. It's coming out of the gate as something small, something not quite there yet. But that's okay. It's going to get there. Never got there. Ain't going to get there. I am now convinced that this is not ever going to happen. So I started using photos just for my personal work, just for kind of, you know, like family, friends kind of photos, the personal stuff. And I started using Lightroom for my professional work. And that was the separation. When I used Aperture, everything was all in one place. It was super awesome and convenient. But with photos, which was not powerful enough to do my professional work, I did like the convenience of having everything everywhere on the web, uh, uh, available on my phone, my tablet, my laptop, whatever it may be. Pretty awesome. Lightroom, really, really robust, had some nice web sharing features, but not a true web client. Not like really, you can't have Lightroom on your laptop and on your desktop and in your tablet and see everything everywhere. So, you know, kind of a bummer, but it's it had the tools that I needed. Then Lightroom CC came out, which Lightroom CC was always around, but they took the, what was Lightroom CC, called it Lightroom Classic, shoved that in the back a little bit and said, this will continue to be developed, but look guys, Lightroom CC is the future, the cloud is the future. Bonus. Lightroom CC, when it came out of the gate, was, let's be honest, pretty much just as powerful as Apple Photos was after a few years of development. Really surprising. I mean, it didn't have everything. There were definitely some features Photos still had, but wow, it was like a killer start. Okay, so this is interesting. That's been, ooh, it's probably been a year or so now. I should have looked that up. I don't know. It's been a little while. And Adobe has been updating our Lightroom CC on a regular basis, fast and furious, and we're getting more and more really cool stuff. This is kind of great, right? I started using Lightroom CC for my professional work as much as I could. Now there are, and still to this day, there are features that are not in Lightroom CC that are in Lightroom Classic that I wish I had, but nothing that stops me from using it as my primary tool now. Lightroom CC is and has been for probably six-ish months, maybe a little bit more, my primary tool for editing my pro work. Um, again, it doesn't have everything, so there are times that it doesn't. I might take a photo over to Lightroom Classic and do something with it there, or just open it in Photoshop or Affinity Photo or whatever the case may be. But for the most part, for the most of the work that I do, uh, Lightroom CC is doing it for me. Cool. I like this because I've got my photos everywhere, right? I do a job for a client and I've got them on my phone, I've got them on my iPad, I've got them on my laptop, I've got them on my computer, they're everywhere. That is so powerful and awesome. I absolutely love that. Um, and at some point you're going, man, you know, should I just move my personal stuff over? Should I just take everything that was in photo, well, it still is in photos, all my personal work, and just move that over so it's all together and I can get back to having everything in one place and have this dream of having all of my photos, no matter, no matter if they're personal or work, and have them everywhere. And, and Adobe just made this possible. Adobe just gave me the tool that I've needed, which is to migrate Apple Photos Library into, <laughs> into Lightroom CC, which is pretty cool. Now, one of the features that was also missing was faces, faces from Apple Photos, but now Lightroom has that as well. So we're gonna take a look at that because it's pretty cool the way it all works together here. So let's start off with the migration. There's nothing really to show. I can't, there's like you select it and then it says, do you want to? And you hit yes and it goes. But let me walk you through the experience because it's not done yet. I've run into some problems. I don't think these are Adobe problems, but it's impossible for me to really know. But let me just tell you my experience so far. Uh, first of all, I'm on Mojave on my systems. I have been having Mojave issues. I've been bitching and moaning about that on YouTube already. I mean, on a Twitter already, but that may or may not have anything to do with the issues that I've got. 
regardless. I most recently, like as in probably 48 hours ago, I launched photos and I got this message, this error message in Mojave saying, uh, there's not enough room on your internal drive to store everything locally. On my iMac, I had photos set to store everything locally. I wanted all the photos there. On every other device, it's managed. It just automatically pushes what it needs, in theory. Um, it keeps what it needs local. So I did not, uh, I launched it and it told me that I didn't have enough space. And I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me, right? And there's really no option to do except say OK, and it switches it over to the automatically managed. And then I go and I check my hard drive, and I've got a terabyte of free space on my internal drive. So there's no way that that was legit. So I go into the settings in Apple Photos, and I switch it back to keep everything local. And it says, congratulations, you're now uploading 40,000 of 40,000 images. Like, what just happened here? I let it go for a little while. I relaunched it. And then at some point, it seemed to catch up. And it goes, oh, you only have 300 left to upload. Yeah. OK. So then I go over to Lightroom, and I start the migration. It goes through a few steps, and it says, oh, the Apple library is either damaged or missing or something's wrong with it. I do a couple of restarts. I launch Apple Photos again. Um, I wait for it to stop telling me it's got to upload anything. Try it again, and it starts to work. OK, cool. So Lightroom is, at this point, scanning the Photos library. Seems to be all good. Um, it starts giving me a progress bar, percentage. It's, I don't know, it gets to like maybe 40% or something. I go home, I log in from home, I check it, it's progressing, we're doing good. Wake up in the morning, the system's completely locked out. Come in and at some point in the middle of the night, something had crashed, everything spontaneously blew up and I had nothing to show for it. So I start over again. Starts to go this time. Okay, good, so we're doing it a second time. Everything's progressing nicely. Then we get to the state that I'm in right now. So here's where I am right now with this migration. As far as I can tell, and we're going to see some of this, as far as I can tell, the migration has completed. The entire 40-odd thousand photos library has migrated into Lightroom CC. That's great. I can see a portion of the structure inside of Lightroom CC. I cannot do anything in Lightroom CC right now on my iMac. I am looking at what is essentially a dimmed out screen. You know how like a so a dialogue will pop up and the rest of the UI goes dark. Well, that's the sense the rest of the UI has gone dark, but the dialogue that was there that was giving me progress is gone. I'm completely locked out of Lightroom. I can't do anything. I would have just quit it, except that I noticed that my bandwidth is being hogged. That's interesting. I got no bandwidth. What's going on? I launched Lightroom CC on my laptop, and sure enough, it shows me, and I'm going to show this to you now for the first time, it shows me that here's my migrated photos library. We're gonna take a look through here in a moment so you'll see the stuff that's going on. But it also shows me this, one of 21,597 photos. And you know, I'm just gonna leave that up there for a moment. Oh, actually, no, I've paused syncing. That's right, I paused syncing for the show. Anyway, that number there is updating. So it's stuff is downloading to this system. Okay, well, if it's downloading here, it must be uploading over there. So then I log into lightroom.adobe.com. Now, did you know <laughs> this is so cool. Did you know that you can access your entire Lightroom CC library from a web browser? You go to lightroom.adobe.com and you see your whole Lightroom library. You can actually edit photos. It's not the greatest experience in the world, but you can actually edit photos over the web. Cool, right? So when I log into that, then I see something else going on. I see, I see, where did it go? Uh, here we go. I see this. Sync issues. See this one here? It says sync issues. This is not something that you see inside of Lightroom itself anywhere. It's got 12,230 images in it. That number yesterday was 17,000. So the sync issues number is going down. What's inside of this sync issues folder, you might ask? Well, let's take a look. If I click on the sync issues folder, it shows this. It shows a bunch of images that are syncing from my 5K iMac. That's the main system. That's the one that's locked up. It says open Lightroom on the 5K iMac to continue syncing. So this system thinks that it isn't open, but it is. It's in that weird stuck state, and it is actually uploading. So I'm telling you all of this to share my experience and so that you can know if this happens to you, if you start the migration and then things kind of lock you out, Check this, go to lightroom.adobe.com, look and see if there's a sync issues folder and see if the number is dropping. Again, this number is currently at 12,000. It was at 17,000 yesterday, so it is going. And this makes sense, I mean, it's probably like a terabyte worth of data that's getting pushed up to the cloud. It's gonna take a little while. So it's progressing. So I'm stoked on that. Okay, so we are at this point going to assume that this is actually going to finish and work. I will certainly update you. You might want to follow me on Twitter to know that one. Photo Joseph, obviously, we will know for sure at some point. But in the meantime, let's take a look at what we are actually seeing inside of Lightroom. So as I said, here is this migrated photos library. 
there's two things inside of here. So this is what has migrated over. There's one that just says photos library with 21,000. That's that number of currently on its, uh, on its way up. And this is just an everything that shows everything. But if I open this, I see two different collections in here, two, two different folders, places and albums. So this is cool. I open up places and you know how you've got places inside of Apple photos? Well, every place just got an album inside of a folder, inside of a folder in Lightroom CC. So if that if you had manually added the place data, you know, you had dragged them in onto the map, um, you're not losing that. And this is not as good as obviously having true GPS, true places and all that, but at least it's it's there. You know, it's kind of, so that part of it's probably less than perfect, but it's there. But that's the like least interesting part of this. Check this out. Okay, let me go up here. Let's close out places. I'll open up the albums folder. And in here we see these are the albums that I had throughout uh, throughout my library, right? These are the ones, these are, if I look at photos, you'll see a 2015 folder, a 16, a 17, an 18, um, and so on. You'll see, this is what I have in there. But here's another one, people. Open up people, and look at all the people names in here. Now, I have been using people, the people or faces feature in Apple Photos for a while, and I've spent a lot of time grouping and naming things and all that. So it's kind of like, it's kind of a drag to make this migration over and lose all of that. But given the less than, the lackluster performance, let's call it a photos, the awesome performance of Adobe Lightroom, I'm like, I'm willing to sacrifice, I'm willing to give up all my faces data and just start over again. But I didn't have to. This is insane. Okay, watch this. Let's go back over here. I am going to now show you the new people feature inside of Lightroom. So you have a new album here, new collection called People. I click on that and this is what it looks like. You get little faces, little circles with faces on it. And when I first fired this up, this is basically what it looked like. So these are all people that Lightroom has found. And looking at these pictures, a lot of these are from a basketball game that I shot. So there's a bunch of people I don't know. And you see each one, it says 50 photos, 50 photos, 50, 51 photos, whatever. Various numbers of photos of those faces on there. And that's what I saw for my entire people library when I first upgraded to Lightroom CC. This is before the photos migration. And I played with a couple of them. I took the collection of my wife and I named it. And um, when I opened it, it asked, you know, is this the same person? We're going to look at that in a second. And I did that. And that was all good. Um, and then I left, I left one behind to do with you guys. Right? I was going to do me entirely live on the air. And then I started the photos migration. And then I looked back into here and look at this. This is wild. Let me scroll back up to the top. Look at all these names that are on here. It has taken the naming from Apple Photos and somehow matched it up to the faces that I've already identified in Photos, matched it up to the faces that it's found in here and said, oh, Apple Photos says that this was Bob. I recognize this face. They must be the same and brought them together. How awesome is that? So your whole people's thing, it's intact. You just might need some cleanup, but it's there. That's crazy cool. Okay, so now let's take a look at how the people's dealio actually works. So somewhere in here, there's a picture of me. So I'm gonna use mine. There we go. There's me. I click on that and it says up here at the top, is this also Joseph Lanashki? So that looks like me. So I'm gonna hit yes, merge. And it does that. And then it brings up again, is it? So it's, it's basically the same thing we've seen before. Every time it's learning, it's improving the algorithm. Yes, that is. And okay, at that point it's done. Now I did this a couple times before with other, well, like I said, with my wife, I did it with my kid. And like with my kid, which is really interesting because he's four years old, my little one, um, obviously I have photos of him since he was born. And so that face changes. And so I got kind of groups of him through different years and it got all the way down to when he was an infant and it really brought it in. And then it started suggesting photos that were not, show photos of another baby, a friend of ours's kid. And at that point I'm like, no, that's not him. No, that's not him. And it seems to have separated those out. Wild. So. The, the people feature in here seems to be working really, really well. Um, there's a lot more to it. I'm gonna have to spend a lot more time with it, but I wanted to show you how good that was and how it migrated with Apple Photos, which I think is just wild. So we've got the Apple Photos migration. We've got the, P, the faces or people view. And then we get into some smaller features that are here. So those are the two really big ones. Now let's take a look at some of the smaller features that are inside of the new Lightroom. Uh, let's see here. We have, we've always had the ability to share, right? I could go to any album on here. I go, okay, look, I've made this album. Um, take this album, select that, and I could share that to the web. Okay, so that's cool. I could always do that. But if I wanted to just share a few photos, like I've got five photos that I want to share with my dad or just share with a friend or whatever, or share with a client, I would have to create an album, share that album, and put those photos into it. Now, 
you're doing effectively the same thing, but it's been made a step easier. You can select any number of photos and just right click and share them to the web. So that's this is how the, that works. So I'm just going to do two photos here because I don't want to screw up my bandwidth here. So I got those two photos. I select this and I say share to web and it comes up and it gives me a chance to name it. So we'll call this um, kitty cat. And you can see it's generating a URL, which may or may not work during the live show because of all the bandwidth that's being hogged by the other Lightroom. Um, I can choose whether I want, just same options I have normally. I can choose whether I want uh, the person who has this link to be able to download it, do I want to show the metadata, do I want to show the location data? And then I click on continue and it adds it into this shared to web album. And you see it's there called Kitty Cat. And I can at this point right click on this, I can view it on the web, I can change the settings, copy the link, stop sharing, rename it, or just delete it entirely. So I have these options on here. So it's just, it saves a step. You don't have to create the album, share the album, add things to it. Just select the pictures, share, and you're done. Nice, little things. There's another feature in here that I'm not going to show you yet because I need to spend some more time with it, but there's this thing called Adobe Portfolio. I actually don't know if Portfolio itself is new or not, but you now have direct access from Lightroom CC to Portfolio. So from what very little I've been able to look at it, and again, I'll do a show just about this because I think it's a very interesting feature. You can build an online portfolio, essentially a web page, a gallery page showing off your best work. You can now access that directly from within Lightroom CC. So you can go and choose your photos and just add them to the portfolio, which is pretty awesome, right? You're sitting there, you got a client shoot, you did some work, you're looking at going, man, I nailed that image. That deserves to be in my portfolio. All you got to do is drag it into your portfolio collection and it's up on your portfolio page. So again, we'll look at that more later because I think it is pretty cool. Filtering is getting better and better. So let's go back to the main view in here. I'm going to go to all photos and we are starting to see some more improvements happening under filtering. So you'll, you'll recognize right away there's some new drop downs here. We still don't have filtering to the level of what we had with Lightroom Classic. We're still not there, but we are getting closer and closer, which is great. Uh, Lightroom Classic had some pretty good filtering. Still, let's be honest, nothing is as good as Apple's filtering was. It, the, the metadata granularity you could do in there was so good. We still didn't get there in Lightroom. We're obviously not there here. Hopefully we will at some point, but Suffice it to say, it's getting better. So let's take a look. You can, if you've added keywords in there, you can go by keyword. It looks like um, there's some, yeah, these are all keywords that have been migrated over actually from photos. You can search by camera model. So that's cool. So now we have this direct drop down to search by camera model. So I can do that. So let's go for like, uh, let's go for GH5. We'll go for G9. There's more of that in here. Um, location, I can add location to my drop down. So I can select on there. I want G9 photos taken in uh, California. We can do that. Oh, there's, that's a lot of them. Um, <laughs> Ashland. Let's go. Oh, you can multiple select. There we go. So you can get those on there as well. Um, sync status. If you're trying to filter out things that are synced or not synced or whatever. And then people. If you've got people in there. So well, that's interesting. It's only showing me. Curious. Okay, maybe I have to actually open all of those people albums to confirm that that's who they are. That's actually a really good. Let's, let's try this out. I'm going to go to open up my wife. There's Alenka. Is this also Alenka? Yes, it is. Is this her? Yes. Is this? Yes. Is this yes? And yes, this might take a while. You notice the numbers down here, they're never really big, um, but it is getting, and these are getting some older photos. Okay, there, that's done now. So now let's go back to all photos and search by people. Oh no, a bunch of them are in there. Oh, that was weird. Okay, so maybe the, oh, maybe it was because it was filtered with the G9. That's why, because it was a combination. I had already selected the G9 in here. That makes perfect sense. So if we go back to that again, um, where were we? Panasonic, there we go. Panasonic G9 and people, nope, uh, yeah, okay, now it's filtered by that, well, but there's still more. Well, who knows? Anyway, the filtering is in there. I'm gonna, I could, we can blame, we can blame some of the weirdness on the fact that it is still syncing and updating. We're gonna call it that for now because it looks like it's pretty good. Uh, so you do have additional filtering in there. And then as before, you have your, your Sensei filtering, the smart filtering. So if I go in here and I type in something like sky, it's going to look for pictures that have sky in it. And, you know, this is getting pretty good. Let's go sky and let's try to type mountain properly. Mountain, mountains, there we go. And look at that, mountains with skies in it. I mean, this is all intelligent searching. Remember, this is Sensei. This is automated AI scanning your photos going, this looks like a blue sky and a mountain and a sunset and those things and automatically putting those keywords on. Kind of interesting. Okay, so that's pretty great. So a lot of improvements there. Um, new feature that I just discovered by accident, which as far as I know just came in this update. I don't think I missed this from before. It's not listed in the updates, but we now have the target album feature inside of Lightroom CC. Target album, let me just show it to you, 
is where I create an album or choose an album. Let's go um, here. I'm working on, a fil on an article for DxO. So I'm going to choose this. I right click on it. Let's zoom into that a little bit. I right click on that and I say set DxO filter article as the target album. So I choose that. And now there's a little dialogue that comes up here that says, oops, now it's gone. But it said press T to add a photo to the target album. If you go under the edit menu to albums, you'll see it here as well. Set DxO filter articles to target album, and then the command add photo to target album is T. So that means if I'm looking at any picture and I go, I want to add this to it, I just hit the T key and it's added that to the album for me. So that's pretty awesome. All right, uh, let's see here. Other things, those are all the features that I've come across that I wanted to show you. There's two things that I've, actually three things that I've been begging for that still aren't here. So Adobe, if you're watching, Please sort this out. We really, really need this fixed in here. Three things. Number one, you'll notice that this column width here is not very wide. You'll notice that because of the way that I name things with my year, month, day description, I can't really see the whole name. I mean, if I hover the mouse over it long enough, it will eventually pop up and show me the name, but I can't see the whole name. I cannot change this column width. This seems unbelievable oversight, but I cannot change that column width. So number one, please, for the love of all things, Digital photography, please give me that. Number two, also has to do with the column sorting in here. If we, let's go back up to, let's go up back, here we go to the 2018 collection. So the 2018 is a folder, all right? The thing called 2018 is a folder. I'm closing a bunch of other folders. The way that I organize my work is I will sometimes create just an album if it's a small shoot or not just on nothing, I really need to separate out a bunch of different pieces, or I will create a folder. And then within that folder, I will have albums like all photos and then you know client selects or whatever they might be in there. Okay, so that makes sense, right? That's just the way I do things. Unfortunately, in this sorting, they are grouped by folder, sorted alphabetically by folder, and then by album. So if you're looking for a shoot, that you know thing in Paris, whatever, you're looking for a shoot and you're looking for it by the chronological name and you know, okay, I just shot this last week. Why isn't it? Well, I'm trying to find it, but it's not there. If you don't remember if you made it as a folder or you made it as an album, you got to look in both places because it's all your folders are here, your albums are here. Please just sort things alphabetically. That's whether it's a folder or an album, it shouldn't matter. Just give it to me alphabetically. That's number two. Number three, I cannot believe that I have to say this, but it's a keyboard shortcut. Under the file menu, you see it says save to is command option E. Sweet. Oh, but it's not. You see, it's not. See, I have done that myself. I have done that myself, and unfortunately, when you go to keyboard and you go to um, shortcuts and you go to app shortcuts and you find Lightroom, which I added, and I put save to, I created this. Because it is not a native shortcut, is one that the system is applying, it is not reliable. This does not always work. If I delete that, go back into here, you see save to, select photo, save to does not have a keyboard shortcut. This is quite literally the single most used command for me. The single most used one command, I need to export photos, obviously. There's no keyboard shortcut for it. So I assigned command shift E, but it, like two thirds of the time it doesn't work. Whoever put this part together saw fit to put a keyboard shortcut for migrating Apple photos to the library, something that you will do all of once, and yet there is no keyboard shortcut for the save to command. I mean, come on guys. Please, just like, am I asking for too much? Just give me that. So those three little things are super simple, obvious ones. There's still things like HDR. We don't have HDR yet. We don't have uh, panoramic stitching. Um, there are some more advanced editing features we don't have yet, but we do have the vast majority of the features that most people need, which is pretty impressive. So I am stoked. I'm excited about this. Um, I'll be really excited once that photos migration happens. The next step, once we get photos in there, will be to take my Lightroom Classic Library, which I've been using for quite a few years, and move that into here. And at that point, probably upgrade my storage space on Adobe Cloud to the two terabyte a month plan because um, I'm going to run out of space real quick. So that's that, everybody. Okay, normally at this point in the show, we would do a Q&A, but we can't today because we're having some serious streaming issues. And I can see people saying that we're not getting uh, a good live stream out there. So we're not going to have a Q&A, um, which means uh, this is the end of the show. Thanks a bunch, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.